Pam Fox at pamfox.org and in today's video I'm going to be making um, vegan sushi. Um, and so my rice is done, I just have to cut up my vegetables and then we can roll. Um, it's just cooling over here. And I have been experimenting and working really hard in the kitchen coming up with um, recipes that don't include any common trigger foods for GERD. So more on that um, at the end of the live. I'll talk more about where I'm at, where I'm coming, where I'm at with my um, food plan and my cookbook and um, my next 30 day challenge. Okay, so for vegan sushi or veggie sushi rolls, um, you just need sushi rice. So for those of you with GERD, that does include rice vinegar, which is a common trigger for GERD. So um, Basically with this recipe, I've just eliminated the, the rice vinegar and it tastes wonderful. It does, I, I mean, do I miss the vinegar? Yes, but <laughs> it still tastes wonderful. So I'm just going to prepare um, my vegetables. I use avocado, cucumber, always goes into, hi Martha Lee always goes into my vegan sushi rolls. That's kind of the staple. And then from there, um, may, that might be all I put in it, or I might add um, a pickled carrot is really good. Pickled, uh, so I just sliced this avocado and then scooped it out with a spoon. Uh, pickled asparagus is really good. So if you guys can't see, I'm just thinly slicing this. Pickled asparagus is really good in sushi. It just adds that little bit of tang. Um, pickled foods aren't um, on the common foods trigger list for GERD, but they are known to be an irritant for some people, which is the thing with um, reflux. You know, some people, can tolerate certain foods and not others. I mean, just because coffee is on the common triggers list for GERD, some people can uh, tolerate coffee fine. Um, and that goes for, you know, all of the foods. It just really just depends. Some people can't do, you know, bread or pasta. So it just depends on the person. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just taking a cucumber <laughs> and taking the skin off. I'm going to have that set up so you can see my cutting board. can't see it. Get further away. Get away. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I can see it now. Okay. So, um, so when you're making your sushi roll, I've got my sushi mat here. And so your sushi is almost the width of a sushi mat or the width of a nori. So you're going to be piling in your veggies from one end to the other. So this is the length of sushi before it's cut up. So you want, so cucumber is great because it's about the same width. <laughs> so I just keep this um, long like that. I cut off a side so I have a flat working surface. And then I just kind of cut it around the seeds. And then this seed part, I'll just snack on that later. But then I just turn these into like long matchsticks that will then go into the sushi. I like to cut them fairly small, just because they're fairly thin, just because that seems to be the way they do it in the restaurant and it works out great. Can you guys see? So I have enough here to make I believe six six sushi rolls so I probably won't even use an entire cucumber I usually don't so I just kind of cut around the seeds not that you can't put them in there you can and a lot of people do hmm good thanks Martha I can't I can't really see that far without my glasses on can't really see what's going on. I'm just removing these seeds. All right, so we've got these cucumbers. And we've got our avocado. And I normally buy these pickled carrots that are like matchstick carrots for sushi, but my local store 
um, didn't have those. Instead, they had these little uh, pickled cucumber uh, or pickled carrot, baby carrots. And I already tasted them. They're not as good, so I'm kind of disappointed. And I hope they get the others back, or I'll have to um, order some because I really enjoy these in my sushi rolls. So I cut these up pretty small, like matchsticks. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry from Illinois. What's the weather like there today? It's beautiful here. So, like I said, I'm going to be making about six sushi rolls. Um, there was a day when I could eat six sushi rolls, but not anymore. My appetite has gotten much smaller. And these pickled carrots are on the sweet side. The ones I'm used to buying are more on the tangy side, which is what gives it a lot of great flavor. Um, but they're going to be good. They add a little bit of extra flavor that is kind of surprising, I guess. Something that kind of makes you go, ooh, what, what is that? What is that flavor? What's that little bit of sweet and sour in there? Blizzard? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It was cold here and yesterday too. I mean, not blizzard cold, but cold. You could feel it cold, but it was beautiful, sunny, beautiful day. So when I cut these little carrots up, I just I cut them in half so then I can lay them flat so I have a flat surface to work on. So I just cut them down the middle, then I lay them flat, and then I cut them again lengthwise. Again, so that they're nice and small. Um, but I was going to say, there was a day when I could eat six of these babies, but I could probably eat three now if I'm really hungry. Two is probably more like it, and I haven't eaten very much today. I've just kind of been snacking all day. so. All right, are we ready to roll? I think we're ready to roll. So this is the nori wrap. These are, you can get these, um, for some reason they have just these regular nori wraps and then they have roasted nori, which I've had and it's, it's better for some reason. Like same brand, only roasted. It's really good. Um, but they were out when I bought these, so I had to get just the regular ones. And they're still good. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn my burner on and I'll just kind of, float this right over the burner to kind of heat them up and then they they're less likely to tear that way i'm not gonna fiddle with that today just because i don't want to be turning around all the time with the camera on all right so this is a sushi mat you don't have to have a sushi mat to roll sushi it does make it a little bit easier and it makes your sushi i don't know you can really kind of squish everything in and make everything compact inside so it doesn't fall apart when you cut it or go to pick it up. And what a lot of people do is put a piece of clear saran wrap over the top of your mat and you'll see why in a minute. You don't have to, it just makes for cleaning your sushi mat a lot easier because if you get rice in between the little bamboo slats and then you don't wash it right away, it's kind of hard to, to clean it. All right, so you wanna lay your sushi mat down. There's a shiny side and a dull side. So you want the shiny side down. And then this is still a little bit warm, but it's been cooling for about 15 minutes. Really, you can use it as soon as it's as soon as it's cool to the touch. It's still sushi's still good when it's sushi's still good when it's warm. So it's okay if you roll it all together when your sushi's still warm. Now again, um, this recipe just calls for sushi rice calls for salt, sugar, and rice vinegar. This just has a little bit of salt. I think a tablespoon of salt in six cups or two cups of rice and a teaspoon of sugar. No, the other way around, a tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. And so what you do is you just take your rice and pop it down. You see that? Yeah, there's too much glare. Yeah, you can see that. And this part, really making sushi is, it just takes practice to kind of get to the point where you don't want to kill yourself. <laughs> a little bowl of wet water is good.
Oh, wow, Mark Lee, that's awesome. That H. pylori can be stubborn. That's good to hear. Maybe we'll do another celery juice um, challenge and get more people involved. I've been thinking about doing another celery juice uh, cleanse myself just because I feel so amazing um, when I do it. Okay, so this is a rice paddle. It usually comes with a rice cooker, but it just makes for spreading your rice a lot easier. You just want to spread it nice and thin. It doesn't really feel like it's going to go anywhere when you first start doing this. But if you just kind of force it to the edges, it, it will go. And you want to take it all the way to the edges with the exception of the top, you want to leave about a quarter to a half an inch at the very top. And you'll see why in a, when we start to roll this. So I'm just kind of forcing it to the edges. You don't want it to, you don't want to pile it on too thick, then it'll be harder to roll. So you want to put it on nice and thin. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get it in there. Some of it might squish out the ends and that's okay too when you roll. Okay, I cannot see if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that, sort of. All right, so next is going to be the sesame seeds. These are just toasted sesame seeds I bought from the store. So I'm just going to sprinkle that right on top of the rice. And this is one of my favorite parts about sushi, so I'm pretty liberal with it. And then we're just going to take a couple of cucumbers and lay those just about an inch from the bottom of the roll. Um, some of these little matchstick carrots. Just kind of pile them up like that. And some avocado. This is a really kind of ripe, slimy avocado, but it's good. You can tell it's good. Just like that. And then, aw, I just broke that. Oh well. <laughs> I just broke a Christmas ornament. Okay, good. Thank you, Martha Lee. Um, that's okay. It's not an heirloom. I just bought it this year at a clearance sale. <laughs> all right, so we have all our ingredients in. Now we're going to roll. So you just take the part of the nori wrap that's closest to you and you just fold it over your vegetables. And then you fold the, you want to kind of get a good um, closure there. You want to fold it over and get closure. And then you can take your um, saran wrap and fold that over. Like I said, this takes practice. And then you pull up your bamboo mat and you just start rolling. You just kind of have to pull this plastic out. And then that little, um, that little edge there that we left open is just what's gonna, we need to kind of stick to itself, to stick to the other side of the nori. Okay, so let me get my bearings here. So this is what we have. They're not quite done yet. You want it when you have it in here, when you have it rolled, you have your, pull it towards the edge of your mat and you roll it with your, your mat and you kind of squeeze and you kind of press. And this is what just kind of binds every, everything together inside, just makes it all really close together and squished together. You don't want to push too hard. Um, you can make these a square if you want, if you push down really hard and then turn it over and push down really hard and then turn it over push down really hard. Now just from that flat surface you have a square or you can just keep rolling it to make it nice and round. And if you squeeze too hard the stuff will come out the edges but I mean it's not a big deal. So that's all there is to it. Now what I've just done here is just kind of the basic way to roll a sushi roll. The next one I'm going to do is the way I prefer to do it which is kind of a little bit more advanced, kind of a step up. Not much of a step up but a little bit of a step up. Um, but we need to slice this up. So we'll just get a plate. And so I like to use a serrated knife. My husband always says he doesn't like a serrated knife. I just think it works a little bit better. And I like to cut these into about half inch pieces because it's fun to eat these a bite at a time. Like nobody wants to just like nibble on their sushi. You want to put the whole thing in your mouth. So this is what it looks like. And you see how everything just kind of is really squished in there. That's because I kind of put that pressure on it. If you just kind of haphazardly roll your sushi and you don't give it that little bit of squish, it just you start to cut and everything just starts to fall out. I mean, the rice is sticky and that helps. It's funny, when you use a little bit of this uh, pickled carrot, there, one of my carrots just fell out. It, it's kind of reminiscent of the little bit of salmon they put in sushi 
or sashimi or sushi with, um, you know, raw fish without the raw fish. So that little carrot just fell out. <laughs> So these are fun to make with um, sprouts because the little sprouts stick out the end and they look like trees. That's fun to do, but I don't have any sprouts right now. I need to get sprouting again. I've got all the tools, all the equipment, all the seeds. Um, I did it this summer and the apartment just, it always smelled so disgusting in here. Sprouting is stinky. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna show you how you do it um, a little bit differently. So this is what I call an inside out sushi roll. So you basically do the very, the same exact thing we just did with one exception. So if you ever go to a restaurant and order sushi, you'll notice that it's usually the skins aren't on the outside. The rice is on the outside and the sesame seeds are on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do here. I really enjoy making sushi. It's something I don't, I'm surprised I don't do it almost every day. It's really filling and satisfying. You, it's versatile. You can really do a lot of, you can really do a lot of different things with it. I mean, put whatever vegetables in it you like. This just happens to be the way I like to do it. This is a pretty um, common way to do it. Veggie rolls, just the cucumber and the um, avocado as a base, and then add from there whatever you like. You can even add in. I saw somebody adding in. Um, Oh, I don't know what they're called, like soy curls, those little meat replacement curls. They have like, I've never, anyway. <laughs> okay, so we put the seeds on like that. And then, oh shoot, I set that down on a little bit of a wet surface. We'll see how it goes. It might break. I shouldn't have done that. And then we flip it over, boom. So now the rice is down on the mat. Okay, and so now we just do the same thing, only you can kind of put it a little bit more towards the middle this way. I do two cucumbers, a, a row of avocado, and just a thin line of these little matchstick carrots. So I do, um, thank you, Julie. I just kind of double them up so there's about maybe three thick all the way along. Okay, all right, so gonna flip that over pull it towards me and get it rolling gotta pull that saran wrap out that's the tricky part and roll 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 just gonna pull it towards me a little bit flip the bamboo over and then we can start to squish and push and roll <laughs> Yeah, you don't, I don't think you, I don't, I mean, it's been so long since I've eaten sushi with raw fish. I don't, I don't miss it. I mean, I know it's delicious. I used to love eating sushi with raw fish on it, but this is so good that, I mean, you don't really, you don't really think about it and go, oh, dang, I wish there was raw fish in this. <laughs> so again, I'm just kind of squishing this, give it, putting a little pressure so everything's getting kind of compacted and squished inside. And then I give it a little roll so it's round and not square. And then we can pull everything out and cut it up. So there we go. I'm gonna put just a little bit more seeds on there. So I really enjoy those. And this is much harder to cut this way. And I got that, yeah, see, that one just totally squished. I got the seaweed wet by laying it on a wet board, so and it's still delicious. Let's see if I can't cut this. So here we have rice on the outside. It all tastes the same. It's just, I don't know, it's just a presentation thing. So 
usually when I do this, you guys know I don't cook for anybody but me anymore. I'm all alone. I am still married. <laughs> but my husband works long hours. He eats at the local restaurants when I go down and give him a break or his lunch break. Um, I've tried cooking food for him, but he'd rather go to the restaurants because, I don't know, he's just a really social person. He wants to get away from work and be with the people he knows and likes. Them. So I just cooked for myself now. And so when I make these, I make six of them. And I usually do, um, I'll eat two or three and then I'll pack up the rest and have the rest in the morning for either breakfast or lunch the next day. And I always bring a little, I have this little, my sister got me a sushi lunch box when she was in Japan. This is so cute. It says, peak point, get pleasure, happy time is delicious. <laughs> but you open it up and it's got this little top part. You can put like your chopsticks there. It actually came with chopsticks. And then you put your sushi in here. And then everything closes together so nice. So I'll put a few of these in here and take them down to my husband. And maybe he'll eat them. He usually just, he's so funny. He, if somebody brings me food, I gobble it up. Like I'll, it'll be gone within an hour. I bring him food and he forgets it's even there. He doesn't doesn't really get hungry or have cravings like normal people. <laughs> okay, I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll make six of these and I'll eat two or three and then I'll pack the rest up for the next day, which is a really great habit to get into. So you don't have to think about cooking so much. You've just got things ready to eat, you know, when you plan ahead a little bit, you make extra. And I know not everybody just cooks for themselves, but you know, this applies to anybody. If you're cooking for four and you want to have, you know, enough for dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow, then you cook enough for eight. And then you don't have to cook lunch tomorrow or dinner tomorrow or whatever it is. And I just kind of have an arsenal of recipes that I love that I just kind of rotate through. I think everybody does. You know, you just have your favorites that you just kind of rotate through. Um, and I always look forward to everything that I cook. I always look forward to my leftovers. That's another thing about my husband. Like, he hates leftovers doesn't like to eat anything that's left over. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. I'll cook something like this and I'll think about it like in bed and I'll eat it for breakfast the next day. It's just like, I can't wait. I love leftovers. I don't know. If we go to a restaurant and my husband doesn't, if he doesn't eat all his food, he just, it just goes back to the garbage. I take home every little morsel if I ever have leftovers. Okay. <laughs> Sesame seeds. And flip. The rice is so sticky. That's why I keep this little bowl of water here. It sticks to your fingers. Okay, some cucumber. Let me put a little bit more on this one. Some carrot. Load it up. And avocado. squish. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. <laughs> I know, I don't get it. When I was growing up, we always left ate leftovers. Oh, vegan meatloaf. Hmm, I see. I've never made vegan meatloaf. I actually have a recipe that I've adapted um, for the non-trigger uh, foods um, for reflux. Um, and I'm gonna make it for you guys. I'll, in fact, I'm not even gonna make it in advance. I'm just gonna make it right here and we'll see how it turns out. It's a lentil loaf and I'm not a big fan of uh, lentils, but I'm always trying recipes 
especially you know when people like ooh and ah over this rest this red lentil recipe or this green lentil recipe that's so good and it's like and then I'll try it and I'll be like okay whatever but yeah I used to love meatloaf it was one of my absolute favorite favorite meals Doo -doo -doo. Oh. Carrots overboard. <laughs> so I hope you guys will try this. It's it might look like it's a lot of work. But it's actually the easiest thing. It just takes a little practice. Oh, okay. Make it the day before. Hmm. Like make it the day before and then let it and let the um, let it sit before you bake it, Rose or Julie. So Rose, my recipe that I'm making does not contain tomatoes because I've adapted it for no common trigger foods for GERD. Um, it doesn't have any common trigger foods in it. It doesn't even have onion. Well, it has leek in it, which is approved for. Um, which is approved um, in terms of it's not a common trigger food. The leeks are a little bit less abrasive than regular onions, and of course, and they're and they're cooked in every recipe that I've been adapting. So, all right, so that's three. I'm gonna go ahead and eat a little bit of this, and then I'll make the rest later. Um, so good. Mm. Wow. That avocado, you know how sometimes you get an avocado that's just like so perfect? It's a perfect avocado. Mm. A little bit of sweet from the carrot. Mm. Honestly, these are like some of the best sushi rolls I've ever made. And I think it's because of the avocado. It's a really good avocado. That sesame just adds a little bit of sesame flavor. It just makes the, the whole dish, you know, just really diverse with the sweet, different textures, a little bit of crunch. Mmm. Definitely try it, Julie. <laughs> Julie, most sushi restaurants or places that sell sushi will make these for you. Mm hmm They'll make vegan sushi rolls or veggie sushi rolls. And everybody makes them a little bit different. Um, so yeah, you can get them at a sushi restaurant. Mm. I'm definitely going to take some of these down to Dwayne. prettiest ones. Mm. 
You better eat them. <laughs> oh yeah, Rose, it's, there's nothing to it. It's just like anything. It's just a matter of learning and then practicing a little bit. But it is frustrating when you first try because it's just, everything's so sticky and... I broke this and not that long ago, but I fixed it. It's not working very well. Um, yeah, it just takes a little practice. It's totally worth it, though. Mmm. The best vegan sushi I ever had was actually in Chicago, <laughs> inland of all places. It was a sushi restaurant. It was right downtown. I don't remember the name of it, but we went there because we heard it was the best. And it was kind of spendy. But I don't know what they put in that sushi. It was vegan sushi, but it was good. I, I think it might have been the place, actually, the first time I had pickled carrots in sushi. Because I was dissecting my sushi trying to figure out what that flavor was. I was like, oh, it's this little orange thing. And then I'm you know, asking the waiter, like, what is this little orange thing? <laughs> It looks like a carrot, but I didn't know. I mean, it tastes like a pimento or something. I did use a regular rice cooker. Yeah, I just have a regular rice cooker. Aroma rice cooker, a cheap kind. I've had it for several years though, and I, I use it a lot. I really like it. Rose rice, white rice. I actually made this little bag while I was waiting for the rice to cool because I finished off the rice and I just cut the top off and then made handles out of the top. And I had some white duct tape that I just taped down. I folded the edge over and taped it down and then taped these to the inside right there. And then I'm going to take my sewing machine and just kind of zip it around to reinforce the handles. So I have a little shopping bag. Mmm. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. I didn't want to throw that bag away. It was so cute. Okay, guys. So I'm going to make my announcement. And then I'll go. So tomorrow I'm going to be coming back on live. And I'm going to um, be making my official announcement for my 28-day anti-reflex, 28-day anti-reflex, 28-day anti-reflux plant-based challenge. Cheers. I have a seed in my tooth. Um, so I've been putting together, again, these recipes that eliminate common trigger foods, and it's a plant-based diet. <laughs> so no meat, dairy, and eggs, no oils, no fried foods, no spicy, no, no spicy foods, um, no coffee, no soda, no alcohol, no smoking, no tomatoes, no citrus, no vinegar. That's a hard one. No lemon, no vinegar. That's a hard one when you're cooking, um, especially plant-based food. Like every recipe calls for lemon and vinegar, it seems like. So, um, so the meal plan, <coughs> I swallowed my spit. The meal plan is ready. The recipes are ready. Just about everything is ready. I just still have a few more things to do and I'll be working on that tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to get it all set up so it's automated. It's gonna be free. Um, I'm trying to get it all set up so it's gonna be automated. Um, but the reason I'm doing it, well, I said I would do it a long time ago and I've just been putting it off because I really don't know 
how I wanted to go about doing it. Plus, every time I would sit down and try to develop recipes, I would just be like, oh, this is so hard. This is so hard. Like, how do you make this without tomatoes? How do you make Mexican food without tomatoes and, and, and jalapenos? And how do you do, you know? So I just like would give up. So um, I broke through, I have the recipes. I have, well, I have 17 recipes, which is great because you don't need, I mean, really, if you can get 10 good recipes that you like and rotate through those throughout the month, I mean, that's what everybody pretty much does anyway. So, um, so the whole, so the, the picture I have is that I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a cooking demonstration of the recipes that if, if you join, I've got, I've created a, a Facebook group that I'll, I'll give you the link to tomorrow. Um, but I'll be demonstrating and cooking and tasting the recipes here. This is actually in it. And um, we'll be doing this together. So um, support, encouragement, inspiration, all of that good stuff. That's the whole, when I first went on a plant-based diet, I, I belong to many support groups. And I don't visit those groups today because I don't need them anymore today. But when I got started, I needed that support and encouragement because I really wanted to stick very closely to a plant-based diet to see what it could do for me. And so um, that's the only way you're gonna know what a plant-based diet will do for you and that's to try it. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that tomorrow and how you can participate in that. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I do too, Martha Lee. I usually cook enough for t tonight and lunch tomorrow at least, if not lunch and dinner tomorrow. That way I like to cook every two days. I mean, I always make a big breakfast, but it's usually a smoothie or potatoes or oatmeal or something like that. So, um, so more details tomorrow and, um, yeah, I think that's it until tomorrow. And then we'll be starting the, the 28 day challenge on Friday, which is the first, which is the first of February. And, um, all of the, 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 the files will be in the Facebook group and they'll actually be sent to you. Um, when you join the group, you'll, you'll send me your name and your email and you'll get an email with all the recipes and the meal plans and the link to the Facebook group, all of that stuff. So. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing, Rose. I the when it comes to your LES, when it comes to hiatal hernia, when it comes to GERD, they all kind of go hand in hand. I mean, some people just have a hiatal hernia and they don't have GERD. Some people just have GERD and they don't have a hiatal hernia. But for the most of us, we have both, and so we have to address the food side of it. But we also have to address the mechanical or anatomical side of it to it. You you have to look at both, but. It really starts with the food and for a lot of people that's all that's needed that's all that's needed and and some people while they can just maybe cut out some of the common trigger foods reduce those and try to eat a little bit more healthy they do great and for others they can be really really strict and do everything right and they still don't get the results they want because again it's an anatomical issue that has to be um, addressed so so this next month I'm going to be demonstrating the cook, cooking the, the the dishes but I'm also I'm losing my connection. So I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm just going to be sharing and teaching. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's the fun part, Martha Lee, is you guys can share your recipes. Um, we can talk to each other and ask questions. And we're just, we're going to learn a lot. We can learn a lot from each other. So, all right, guys, thanks for joining me. That was fun. So I hope you tried this recipe and hopefully you'll check back in tomorrow and there'll be more details about the challenge. Thanks for watching.